Hello everyone, it's meteorologist Jacob Campbell here with your first Weather Now monthly forecast for November 2019. Before I get into the video, I wanted to ask that you subscribe to this channel if you like my content and share the video to your friends and family if you want to help my channel grow. Uh, also follow me on Twitter, the link's in the description, and uh, join my Discord server, which the link is also in the description. Now let's get into it. When doing these monthly forecasts, there are a number of factors that we have to consider. First of all are the teleconnections. The teleconnections that most impact the United States climate are the Pacific North American pattern, the uh, Arctic Oscillation, the North American Oscillation, and the ENSO or El Nino Southern Oscillation. The Pacific North American pattern, or just the PNA for short, is a large and constant high or low pressure just off the southern coast of Alaska. What's constant about it is that no matter whether it's a high or a low pressure, it's always generally in that Alaska, you know, the southern coast of Alaska area. A positive index is associated with an area of high pressure, and a negative index is associated with an area of low pressure. This pressure affects the jet stream position and can affect temperature and the precipitation of the continental United States. A positive index is usually correlated with cool temperatures and increased precipitation on the western half of the country and in portions of the far uh, southeastern uh, part of the country. And the eastern half of the country, as well as the northwest, tend to remain drier and warmer. Uh, when there's a negative index, that's associated with troughing, which means the western half of the United States uh, gets warmer and drier, and the eastern half of the country gets uh, cooler and wetter. If we take a look at the ensemble mean outlook for the PNA, we see that most of the models are forecasting a negative PNA for the beginning and the end of the like mid parts of November. Then there's the Arctic Oscillation, which is another pressure system sitting above the North Pole. When it's in its positive phase, the majority of the U.S. stays fairly warm and snow tracks generally stay to the north, uh, around the, the north of the Great Lakes around the Canadian border. When it's in its negative phase, the Midwest and the Great Plains are generally cooler and the two coasts stay warmer, but the plains in the Midwest tend to see a greater snowfall. If we take a look at the ensemble mean outlook for the Arctic Oscillation, or the AO for short, we see that most of the models are forecasting a, a neutral to slightly positive index, but moving back to a negative index by mid-November. Next we have the North Atlantic Oscillation, or the NAO for short. During a positive NAO, storm track is normally to, uh, south to north. Uh, it, it still goes east to west, but it, it does tend to dip south and then go further north. Uh, for example, there was a positive NAO during most of the 2018 to 2019 winter, and a large portion of the winter snow tracks dipped south and then went on a more general south to north track. A negative NAO comes with a more east to west storm track. Looking at the ensemble mean outlook for the NAO, we see that it's a pretty even distribution between uh, one and a negative one on the index, meaning that we can expect just about a neutral NAO. Lastly is the ENSO, or the El Nino Southern Oscillation, which is probably the most complex and also probably the one you guys are most familiar of hearing. Uh, but the ENSO could be a topic in its own video, which I might do. Uh, it's a little too complex to put in this video about um, November uh, forecasts. Uh, but the ENSO is predicted to be fairly neutral for most of the month. I found a database that has the average values of the PNA index, the AO index, the NAO index, and the ENSO index from about 1950 to present. I took all of that data and put it into an Excel spreadsheet. I then filtered it to show only uh, the November months of every year, and then filtered it again to show values for the teleconnections similar to what's being predicted for uh, this November. After doing that, I found about five matches uh, for Novembers that looked similar to the November that we're going into, and those were 1960, 1961, 1964, 1995, and 2012. These were the temperature anomalies for the month of November in those select years. The Midwest and East of it were well below average, about 2 degrees Fahrenheit below average over the course of the whole month. The Rocky Mountains and West remained about 1 to 2 degrees Fahrenheit above average over the course of the month. When looking at precipitation, much of the East Coast saw below average precip, while the Pacific Northwest saw above average precip. Here are my official predictions based off of this. 
The Great Lakes down to Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia will likely be about 2 degrees below average, while the East Coast and almost all of the Gulf states will see temperatures about a degree below average. The setup is favorable for more troughing uh, to happen in the eastern half of the country, uh, bringing in those cooler temperatures. There will likely be more ridging in the western half of the country, bringing warmer temperatures. Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado will likely see about 2 degrees above average temps, uh, while North California, Nevada, and many of the Rocky Mountain states will see about a degree above average temp. Switching to the precipitation, much of the eastern half of the country is drier than the western portion. The eastern half of the country is prone to seeing troughs funneling in cooler air, which will cut back on the precipitation thanks to limited moisture coming from dry Canadian air. That being said, what moisture is there could fall as snow, which I'll get back to a little later. The west, which is more prone to ridging, will see uh, more precipitation due to the abundance of moisture from the air being funneled in from the equatorial Pacific. Systems that do form, although ridging isn't very conducive to rain development, will be supplied with more moisture, meaning more rainfall. In the Great Lakes up to the New England area, I'm expecting that we will see some cold shots and even some chances for early snow. With less moisture and cooler temperatures coupled with the troughs that are likely to move through the Great Lakes, this increases the chances for snowfall because troughing typically is associated with more um, uh, systems setting up. The Gulf of Mexico states will likely uh, continue to see the dry conditions that they've been experiencing, but they'll be slightly cooler than normal, which they've been a bit on the warmer side uh, up till about now. The Great Plains states will see about an average November, while the West Coast will see warmer temperatures and maybe slightly more rainfall. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you. Hello, everyone.